there's nothing wrong with the exhaust, so. It really is like being on, on another planet. And that is what lift kits are good for. In the summer of 22, we shipped our van across the world from the UK to Canada, beginning an overland journey that will take us down to Argentina. After spending the last few months driving down the eastern seaboard of the USA, we've made it across the country to the remote deserts of New Mexico, where we're going to be changing things up a little. Subscribe and join us for the ride, and welcome to episode 17. We are in New Mexico. We said at the end of last week we had a bit of a change to our plans. We were originally going to take about six weeks to cross the states from Florida over to Baja, California. <clears throat> yes. Oh. Come on, Scott, this way, buddy. So last time we were in Florida, and now we've driven through Mississippi, Alabama, Alabama Texas, Louisiana. Louisiana. Not in that order. Not in that order, because that would have been stupid. Like originally we were going to take six weeks to get from Florida over to California, but we realized when sitting down looking that if we did that, we'd literally be spending two days in places and not really seeing much. We'd be really like thin out on what we'd see. Spread thin, wouldn't we'd, we? That's it, we'd be spread thin on what we'd see. So we decided, We'd find a fixed point and explore that. And New Mexico, was it? So yeah, we basically decided to do longer drives, but then just stop in a place for a bit longer to see it more in depth. The reason that we've chosen New Mexico is this place is unlike anywhere else we've been in the state so far. Like culturally, historically, the landscapes here. We're so excited to explore and yeah, we've woken up in the desert. Deep sand then. The engine is smelling of something. It smell the exhaust. I wonder if because of the wind, it's like blowing it up, and that's what I can smell. But it is the exhaust, but there's nothing wrong with the exhaust, so like it's all there. I think it'll be okay, we'll just keep an eye on it. We had a pretty crazy drive through Texas over New Year's to get here. It took us a couple of days. The weather was completely crazy. There were like crazy weather warnings for East Texas and like tornado warnings. The wind was absolutely insane. Like there was tumbleweed. We've seen tumbleweed for the first time. It was blowing everywhere across the road. We drove into this massive like sandstorm. I was really worried there's going to be like a twister in it. And um, yeah, just crazy weather getting through Texas. But we've made it in to the little southeastern corner of New Mexico. First stop, obviously, we're in hunt of some little green men. Roswell, baby! We're going to Roswell. How cool is this? <laughs> First stop, UFO Museum. So I'm sure Roswell needs no introduction, but for just to freshen your memories, Roswell, New Mexico is the site of the supposedly one of the biggest government cover-ups in history. Something crash landed in the deserts around Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. The locals say it was aliens. The government say it was a weather balloon. What do you think? Aliens. <laughs> Slightly cheesy, but full to the brim with eyewitness testimony and research reports. The UFO museum was the place to channel your inner Mulder and Scully. 
After all, the truth is out there. So apparently, so these are some actual artifacts found from the crash site. Some of them have alloys that we've never heard of before, never seen before. I was like, you on New Year's Day. After <laughs> drinking all the rum. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> Did someone go a little bit crazy in the gift shop there? Hundred dollars later. <laughs> All right, so we're back. 45 minutes in the museum and it was $7 each to get in, which was absolutely great. Lots of interesting information in there. It was really good, guys. I don't read books. I don't, I get bored really easy, but I do love like UFO alien books. So I've bought three books. I'm going to be the new Roswell Experts. You're going to be the new Mulder, aren't you? We're the new Mulder. Real life Mulder. We have got a book on Project Blue Book, which is about like the government project on UFOs or something like that. Yep, that was a, that was a, a, a genuine project. Roswell, the ultimate cold case, closed. It is actually, it's genuinely really interesting hearing about what really happened um, and what's kind of been covered up and hushed up and hidden. Definitely wasn't a weather balloon, whatever it was. It wasn't something like innocent, that's for sure. I got, for me, I got a New Mexico UFO license. <laughs> I don't know what the hell this is. I can drive any two spaceships with a permit of GWR of 20 tons or more and a combination of speedy aircraft and outer space travel only. So I've got what, a little, I've got a little alien license. And what's, what's really canny is that they actually had your photo on it as well. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> This is more about you than me. It's like one of those like, one of those like pop culture places that is just, it's so cool to be here. Everything in Roswell, or a lot of things in Roswell are alien orientated, even the street lights have alien heads on. How cool is that? But also, the McDonald's is built in the shape of a spaceship. I thought it was gonna be more impressive than that. Okay, just stopped to grab a quick coffee. I was a little bit disappointed with that McDonald's. For some reason, when Ben said it's built like a spaceship, I imagined like some crashed spaceship, like huge, like sticking half out of the ground. And like, that was the McDonald's, but it kind of just looks like a slightly hexagonal building with glass in it and lights on it. And I couldn't really film inside because there were loads of kids in the spaceship area. Be take it for because what it where is. you go and order, and the rest of it is just a normal building. So it's just. It wasn't the spaceship of my dreams, but we are going to do something a little bit more adventurous than just driving around Roswell town. We are on a mission to go and find the original crash site. Now the original crash site is on a ranch, which is private. So we can't actually go to the direct site, but we want to go at least onto the road that the ranch is on so that we can kind of look out over the area where it crashed. It's actually quite hard to try and find exactly where it is. There isn't a huge amount of information online, which you think there would be. Very I, well hidden. I pinned something on Google Maps for us, and I reckon that's where it is. So we'll head this way. Okay. Called the debris field. Debris field. <laughs> the debris? Is the it debris. debris? Debris field. Debris field. Debris field. Right, got your tinfoil hat on? Debris, what about the cheddar field? What, what field of cheese? Debris. Oh, the cheddar. Jeez. <laughs> if I'm honest, the pin I put on here, I don't even know if it's the right place. It's saying to go left. Well, it's definitely... Oh, there is not a road in there. Not a road in there. Sat nav was telling us to turn left straight into a field, basically. There was no road there, so we're going to take the next left anyway. Basically, off Absolutely no idea where Ben's coordinates were sending us, but we basically found out that the ranch is in a place called Corona, which is like 75 miles, like an hour and a half in the complete wrong direction. And even then, we still can't find exactly where you're supposed to go. It is very well hidden, the site of this crash. So, we've turned around. Tell you what, even if we've not found any aliens, this landscape is like being on another planet. As we left Roswell behind, the hills began to rise around us. The setting sun turned the world golden and for the first time we felt like we'd stepped foot into the American road trip. You know, the kind you see in films and the kind we dreamt about since we arrived here. Wow. 
This is just a little forest access road, literally off the main highway. How nice is this? This is really nice. Just right in the middle of all these hills. There is no end to this girl's talent. She can cook, she can light a fire. I'm rubbish at making fires, I'm literally useless. Unless I've got some really high accelerant, then I'm okay. Chess though, give us some matches, a few dry bits of wood and some paper and oh, phew, she's bare grills. Now the sun is set behind here, it is cold, isn't it babe? It, the temperature, I'm wow. Okay. I think you're struggling a bit. Well, temperature dropped. I've not been moving around, I've been working whilst Cheska make fire. No way. Jack Queen King, 9876. Yeah. Oh my God. Well Woo. done. <laughs> ben, yes. ben never wins at Rummy. Never. I actually, <laughs> I don't, I never, never ever win. Yeah, get on, buddy. Get on. You know, one thing we're really learning on this trip is how to travel, basically. It's like we're used to you know, seeing as much as we can of a place, not wanting to miss anything. And actually, we're starting to realize that it's probably better to miss things and the things that you do see, to see them really well and deeply. And that's like, yeah, why we're here. We wouldn't be in this spot if we were just racing through and yeah. We have got a spinach and ricotta Oh wow. They're gonna to drop to like what is it tonight? Minus <coughs> minus two tonight, I think. I was hoping last night that after visiting the UFO Museum, we might have been treated to a light display of flying saucers in the sky, but we weren't. Oh that reminds me. I wish, I'd love to have seen something like that, it'd be amazing, but... If no. any of you have had a UFO experience, please let us know in the comments what it was. I love hearing about people's like paranormal UFO sightings. I've never really had one. You've never had one. Nope. My nan has had one. She said she was out one evening out with a friend when she was about 20 and they were looking at how bright the moon was and saying how beautiful it looked. And then her friend was like, well, if that's the moon, then what's that? And the crescent moon was there. And they looked back at this bright white object in the sky and apparently it just went and just disappeared right yeah. in front of her eyes. And she said they ran home because they were that scared. So I'd love to hear about your UFO experiences. across on camera quite how deep this little dip is. Tell me about my yeah, you are you okay? Okay. Yep. Yep. All fine. And that is what lift kits are good for. We have left behind that idyllic campsite. We are now heading south and we're gonna be driving as far south as we can kind of reach before we get to the Mexican border. We're not crossing into Mexico just yet though. As you can see, we are driving through this expansive like empty plains. There's actually a missile test area. In fact, there was a sign that we went past that said when the lights are flashing, the road is closed and there can be delays for up to an hour as they do missile tests. In fact, we can see jet planes taken off from the Air Force Base, like one after the other, circling around, banking, like, it's really, really cool, actually. We have made it to White Sands National Park. This is a huge 300 square mile desert of pure white sand. Well, it's technically gypsum, but yeah, 
It is amazing. It's like another planet. Soft, powdery. You just want to walk? You just want to grab it. It just doesn't look like sand I've ever seen before. Do you have all the national parks I've been to so far? This is by far the best. Oh, this is amazing. Look at this. I mean, it's because it's so unusual, so different rather than like a, a forest. Yeah, a this mountain. Like Mountains. Proper cool. So, so this is gypsum, not white sand. And there was the Permian Sea here. And probably like millions of years ago, it retreated and left behind these huge gypsum deposits. And apparently there's a layer of water beneath the surface which keeps the dunes moist and keeps them here and stops them from blowing away. <coughs> the largest gypsum deposit in the world. And, you know we saw those jets flying overhead? Yes. I recently read that Trinity site, which is where the atomic bomb was first detonated, is 100 miles north of here. Oh wow. Yeah. Go on then, run up the bank. Oh, you're kidding me. Go on then. Ready. Watch Jessica. Ready, up here. Go, this way. Oh. Oh my god, this is a... The camera! <laughs> Don't drop the camera! Oh, my legs! It really is like being on, on another planet. It's awesome. actually quite disorientating. Like by the time you go over one dune, then left and right, the next thing you know, you don't know where you are. You've got the soft dunes up here, but then down here, it's, all, it's where you can kind of tell it's not sand. Do you know I think? Like these bits are almost like crystallized, like salt. Yeah. They're kind of crunchy. Actually quite wet. <laughs> it's not like the dusty stuff on the dunes itself. So this must be like the water level where it keeps it. Yeah, yeah. Keeps like it kind of solid. Far. How far down, I don't know, but yeah, that's really moist. Just had a little photo shoot. So we've just come for a beautiful little sunset hike onto this trail called Life of the Dunes Trail and it just gives you loads of information about all the plant and animal life that lives here because even though it looks pretty barren and like it would just be like a few shrubs and bushes you've got foxes here, hawks, American badgers, bobcats, mice and then loads of different plants. We parked up 10 minutes away from the dunes with eye melting views over a lake and towards Mexico. Don't forget to subscribe to follow our journey to Argentina and we'll catch you next week as we take on the rest of New Mexico. This will do.